um, in each scenario. Now these might look really intimidating, especially because of the fractional exponents, but again, as always, the key is to break these things down piece by piece. Now we're going to follow a, uh, a fairly simple idea um, that, let's say we had just x squared, and that equals 4. Well, what would we do, first of all, to undo x squared? Well, we take the square root of both sides, right? The square root of x squared is just x, so that would give us what? x equals 2. Okay, well, what if we started with the square root of x, right? And that equaled 4. How would we solve for x here? Well, how do you undo the square root? Well, that's again, that's the 1 half power equals 4. And to undo the square root, you square it. So if you have x to the 1 half, you would square that, square both sides, keep it balanced. And here you would get what? Well, multiply these two. That's a half times 2, which is 2 over 2, or 1. And then x is equal to what? 16, right? 4 squared is 16. That makes sense. The square root of 16 is 4. Well, the same is true for any other thing, like cubed roots. Well, if I had x to the, or the cubed root of x, which is equal to x to the one-third, right? Let's say I had, oh, x to the one-third equals 8. Well, in that case, how do I undo the one-third power? The same way I undo the half power. For the half power, I raised the second power to undo it. So you can imagine for the third power, I would raise that, right, to the third. And bounce it on both sides. And here we get x would equal 8 to the third power, which is 64 times 8 which is, what is that, 480 plus 32, right? Six times, uh, 60 times 8 is 480 uh, plus 32. So that's uh, 502, right? Oh, no, it's not. I always do that. It's 512, right? 480 plus 20 plus 12 more. That's 512. The basically, basically, the idea is that if you have x to the a over b power, if you want to solve for that, you could multiply it to the b over a power. And it will always balance out because those are reciprocals. So the idea is use the reciprocal to solve. Here you might not have seen those reciprocals, but it is 1 half times 2 over 1. 1 third times 3 over 1. And this will always work. It even goes back to the simple example. If we start with x squared, that's, right, x squared, we multiply that by the 1 half, right? So then we have 4 to the 1 half, which is 2. So you always multiply by the reciprocal to solve for x. So that's one way to think about it. So we can take x to the 2 thirds, right, and just multiply it by 3 halves, and then do this on both sides, 4 to the 3 halves as well. So the reciprocal exponent will solve it for you. Here we get x, right, because these two cancel out. All right, you get 6 over 6 is 1. And now we have 4 to the 3 halves. That's not so bad because we can split up 3 halves into 3 times a half. So you can think of this 4 to the 3rd power and the square root of that. Or you can think of it as in the opposite way. You can think of it as x, right, as 4 to the 1 half to the 3. So what's going to happen here? Well, 4 to the 3rd is 64. We're taking the square root of that, or the half power of 64, and that's 8. Here we take the half power of 4, which is 2, to the 3rd power, which is also 8. Now, are we done there? Is x equal to uh, just 8? Well, here, notice, we, I think it's easier to think about in this context, we raise 4 to the third power, that gives you 64. Now, if we take the square root of 64, it could equal positive or negative 8, right? Because here, remember, negative 8 squared is also 64. In this case, take the square root of 4, that could be positive or negative 2. Positive 2 to the third is 8, negative 2 to the third is also negative 8. So that's one way to think about it. Or you could um, break up these... Um, these exponents from the start, you can think of this as um, x squared, right, to the one-third power, and that equals 4. Now you might solve it this way. Oh, I have a one-third power. To undo that, I, I cube it, and I cube both sides. So now I have x squared, right, these canceled out, equals 64. And then you can think, oh, to solve for this, I take the one-half power on both sides, or the square root. And I'm done, because now you have x is equal to the square root of 64, which is plus or minus 8. So we have two matches there, plus or minus 8. Now here, um, actually, we're going to use the same kind of strategy, even though it looks a lot more difficult. First thing I'm going to do is rewrite it. So we have 2x to the negative fourth, right, plus 3 equals 4. Subtract 3 from both sides. What do we have? Well, these cancel out. 
we have 2x to the negative 1 fourth equals 1. Okay, now what? We'll I'll divide 2 on both sides. Okay, so now we have, these cancel out, x to the negative 1 fourth is equal to 1 half. That looks intimidating, but we can do it. So really, you should think that, oh, I'm going to take something to the negative power here. So what I'll do is I'll raise both sides to the negative fourth. Not just fourth, because I want to cancel out the negative and the one-fourth. So I'm raising both sides to the negative fourth power. What does that mean? Well, well, this is, I know this is a lot of algebra here, but check this out. This cancels out. That's great. Okay, it's x. Now we have negative one to the negative, uh, one over two to the negative fourth. Remember, if you have x to the negative a, that equals one over x to the a. Well, what if you have one, what if you have one over x to the negative a? What does that equal? Well, that ends up equaling x to the a, right? It's just reversing the process here. So how do we how do we apply this exponent? Well, laws of exponents said this equals negative, uh, sorry, this equals one, the numerator to the negative fourth power over two to the negative fourth power. What does that equal? Well, one to the negative fourth, uh, we don't even worry about one to basically any power is just one, right? Because you end up dividing or multiplying by some number of ones. So that, that's gonna be nice. So the numerator, we just leave it alone. But the denominator is where we kind of apply our laws of exponents. Um, really, again, if you think about it, all this ends up being is two to the fourth, right? So these are equivalent because that negative exponent just kind of reverses the whole process. The idea being that, that I'll just go over this part. This means one divided by two to the negative fourth, doesn't it? Right, that, that fraction means division. And two to the negative fourth means one over two to the fourth, which is our, our basic definition right here. And so one divided by two to the fourth is gonna equal one times two to the fourth over one. Right, all I'm doing there, divide a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. And really that's just two to the fourth in this case. So instead of going through all this background, you could just remember the negative exponent kind of reverses your fraction. So that's our answer, two to the fourth. And that should be what? Well, two times two is, is four, times two is eight, times two is 16. So here it looks like x is uh, equal to 16. And here, um, by the way, we don't need to, at least I don't, I don't think we need to account for the positive or negative because we're not finding the root so much, we raise it to a power. Right, if we're taking the square root or some kind of root of a value, we have to consider both the positive and negative uh, numbers that work. But here I think we're okay, but let me let me just think about this in another way. We'll plug it into this part of the equation. So we have x to the negative one-fourth right, equals one-half. So let's just test this out. So if I have 16 to the negative one-fourth, does that equal one-half? Well, the negative one-fourth, that's going to be one over... 16 to the 1 fourth, right? So that should equal 1 half, right? I'm just reversing that process. So the fourth root of 16, that's what we're trying to find here in the denominator. So what times itself four times equals 16? Well, that could be positive 2, or it could be negative 2, right? However, right, not, it, I don't think it could be positive or negative 16, right? Think about that because if it was negative 16, Right, we, need, we would need imaginary numbers to get 2. So yeah, 16 has two roots. This could be equal to 1 half or 1 over negative 2.